The Gospel of Matthew, the Lord Jesus is exemplified as the King of glory. time you get to Matthew chapter 24, the Lord Jesus has set his face towards Calvary. And he's about to go and die for our sins. In chapter 24, chapter 25, he is preaching to the nat- nation of Israel and he is teaching them and he is trying to prepare them for being right with God and for the second coming of the Lord. And we find in chapter number 25... He continues that theme and he's speaking to those around him. And in verse number 1 he says, Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins, which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. And five of them were wise and five were foolish. They that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. While the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. And at midnight there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom cometh, go ye out to meet him. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said unto the wise, Give us of your oil, for our lamps are gone out. But the wise answered, saying, Not so, lest there be not, uh, be not enough for us and you. But go ye rather to them and that sell and buy for yourselves. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and they that were ready went in with him to the marriage, and the door was shut. Afterward came also the other virgin, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered and said, Verily I say unto you, I know you not. Watch therefore, for ye know neither the day nor the hour wherein the Son of Man cometh. This, my dear friends, we find is a parable from the Lord. A parable is an earthly story with a hidden heavenly meaning. And he's taking those things that they knew to uh, ex- uh, express to them a heavenly truth. He's trying to get their hearts in tune with the fact that they need to be right with God, uh, for the Lord is coming someday. Uh, now I want you to notice something about this parable. He's using marriage as a parable. And he is using marriage of that day... Uh, and all that is associated with marriage uh, uh, to get them to understand that one day in glory there's going to be a great marriage. Uh, One day in glory Jesus is going to be married to his church uh, and only those uh, uh, that have been prepared uh, and are ready uh, will be married to the Lord. Uh, My dear friends, as we sit here today, the devil beats you up, tell you you're nothing, uh, tell you you're worthless, uh, uh, tell you that you have no hope. uh, But if you know Jesus, you have a blessed hope. uh, And by the way, you are somebody, uh, and you are worth something. Uh, God bankrupt heaven just for you uh, because he's loved you with an everlasting love, uh, and he does think you're worth it. Uh, Now in that day, marriage was done a little different than in our day. In that day, marriage was arranged between fathers, and there would be a dowry that would have to be paid, uh, and there would have to be certain preparations and agreements made uh, when a father would allow his son to marry another man's daughter. And when the covenant was agreed upon uh, and the arrangement was made, uh, the father would tell his son to go prepare uh, a place for his uh, uh, future bride that would be worthy for a bride to come to. Uh, And that young man would usually build a place on his father's place, uh, attached to his father's place, uh, and then he would uh, uh, make certain that it was all done properly and that it was all wonderful and it was a place that uh, uh, his a spouse bride would be proud to dwell in. Uh, and when uh, he'd get it done, uh, he would go to his father, and his father would come and expect it. Uh, and if it met the father's approval, uh, he would give the th- son the thumbs up uh, and say, go get your bride. Uh, and
And whenever that uh, 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 agreement between the father and son came to pass that he could go get his bride, uh, he'd lie out after her. Uh, didn't matter what time of day, uh, didn't matter what day of the week, uh, he'd go get her. And a lot of times it might even be in the middle of the night. Uh, and he'd go and catch his bride away and steal her away and take her back to his place uh, and make her his own. Uh, uh, can I say, uh, Jesus said, let not your heart be troubled. Uh, if you believe in uh, the Father, believe also in me. Uh, in my Father's house are many mansions. Uh, he said, but I go to prepare a place for you. Uh, and if I prepare a place for you, uh, I will come again uh, and receive you unto myself. Uh, that where I am, there you may be also. Uh, hallelujah. He's been preparing a place. Uh, now think about this. Uh, he created everything that we see in six days. Uh, can you imagine? He's been gone 2,000 years. Uh, what he's been preparing for you uh, and what he's been preparing for me. Uh, Miss Cindy, don't tell me he don't love you. Uh, if it's taken him 2,000 years uh, to fashion a place just for you. Uh, oh, how he loves you today. Uh, hey, the Bible says it hasn't even entered in the heart of man uh, what God hath prepared uh, for them that love him. Uh, oh, what a place he's gone to prepare uh, in our text we find ten virgins now uh, uh, what I described previously was the common man's marriage you and I are commoners I don't know Ray's kind of uncommon but the rest of us are commoners this is dealing with somebody of royalty somebody that was a king or lord or somebody that had uh, a lot of money and a lot of stature, uh, uh, what they would do is they would bring uh, uh, several virgins together. Uh, they'd put them aside for purification, uh, and then they'd have a big feast, uh, and they'd bring the virgins out before this person, and he got to choose which one he wanted. You have a great illustration of that in the book of Esther. So we find that there are ten virgins who have been set aside uh, who are going to go meet the bridegroom so he could choose uh, who he wants. Now we see there's a parable. Now notice the picture. The bridegroom obviously represents Jesus. You find there are ten virgins, five wise and five foolish. The wise virgins picture saved folks. The foolish virgins picture lost folks. We find that they have a lamp. The lamp is a picture of the Word of God. Uh, can I say, if the entrance of thy word bringeth light unto all that are in the house, is what the psalmist said. Uh, none of us would ever get to the bridegroom have we not the lamp, the Word of God, uh, uh, to show us which direction to go. Uh, then we find uh, 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 there's oil mentioned. Oil is always a picture of the Holy Spirit of God. Uh, uh, we find that the five wise had oil. The five foolish didn't have oil. Uh, 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 listen, what separates us here today is not our heritage, not our race, uh, uh, not our uh, uh, status in the community. What separates us today is whether or not we've been saved uh, or whether we're lost. Uh, notice uh, the oil was brought in a vessel. The vessel is always a picture of the body or the temple of the soul. And then we see light. Light is understanding. Can I say nobody understood anything about God until God revealed himself to you. You were lost, didn't know how to get to God, didn't know anything about God, but God in His providence uh, let you know He existed uh, and let you know that He loves you. We see the parable, we see the picture. Now I want you to notice the personal application. Look in verse 11. The Bible says, Afterward came also other virgins, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But He answered and said, Verily I say unto you, I know you not. Watch therefore, for ye know neither the day nor the hour wherein the Son of Man cometh. Brother Clint, as far as I'm concerned, I love you. I hope you're saved. But as far as I'm concerned, it really doesn't matter to me if you're saved or not. The only one that really matters if you're saved or not is me. I'm the only one I can control. And there's a personal application. I had to get saved. I couldn't get saved because you were saved. Hmm? I have two of my children here. Thanks be unto God, they've accepted Christ. But they couldn't be saved because I was saved. They had to personally accept Christ themselves. Uh, 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 we all have a personal application. Uh, uh, listen, uh, 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 they were all there 
and only five got to go in. Now, I'm glad you're in church today, but I wonder if you're in. I got to thinking about this, and I want to preach on this for just a few minutes. I want to preach on what if Jesus came tonight? What if Jesus came tonight? Make, make no mistake, he promised, promised he's coming, and he's coming. And can I say under the law of witness in Deuteronomy chapter number 18, in order for something to be established in a fact in the eyes of God, there had to be two or three witnesses. Uh, Jesus promised he was coming. And when he ascended back into heaven, there were two angels that said, uh, Why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus that went up uh, is coming back in like manner. There's a witness. Uh, not only did Jesus say he was coming, uh, uh, but those angels said he's coming. Uh, but even if you need another witness, uh, God pinned it down so you and I could see that he promised he was coming uh, and it's impossible for God to lie. He's coming. The Bible says we don't know the day nor the hour, but he could come today. Hmm? What if Jesus comes tonight? Can I ask you first of all, would you be ready? They announced the bridegroom was coming. Five were wise, they had oil. Five were foolish. And the foolish did what foolish people do. They went to the wrong person for help. They went to the wise, said, give us of your oil. They said, no, this is ours. I can't help you. Go get your own. But it was too late. If he comes tonight and you don't have oil, it's too late for you. Hmm? Will you be ready? Huh? Have you been saved by the good grace of God? Uh, have you repented of your sins and put your faith in the finished works of Calvary? Uh, have you realized you're lost? You don't, you're not saved. If Jesus came, uh, I wouldn't go. Uh, uh, friend, why don't you get ready? Uh, are you ready? Uh, you can be ready. You say, preacher, how do you know I can be ready? You're in God's house tonight, uh, this morning. Uh, you're hearing this morning that Jesus loves you, that he died for you, that he was buried and rose again. Uh, and if you put your faith in what Jesus did you can be ready uh, again the five foolish was there but they weren't ready they had their wedding garments their outside was dressed up but they didn't have the oil mm, say how do you get the oil friend when you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ you're sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise when you get saved, God quickens you. You're dead in trespasses and sins. He makes you alive. What quickens you? The Spirit of God. He takes up His abode in your life. Hmm? Are you ready? Are you saved? Say, preach, I don't know. Here's how you need to here's, here's how you know. See, if you're saved, things you used to say and do that didn't bother you, if you say and do them now, it'll bother you. Mm. Mm. them four letter words you throw off your tongue not bother you now if you let one slip it bothers you that, that ought to let you know you're saved because yes, the Holy Ghost is telling you you ought not talk that way huh? things you think that aren't right it'll bother you here's another way to know that you're saved before you got saved you didn't care much about the things of God you didn't care about reading the Bible and going to church and hearing singing and all that. But now that you are saved, you can't wait to go to church and hear the Bible, preach and hear singing and be around God's people. Here's another way to know that you're saved. If you're saved, you can't wait to tell somebody else how to be saved. Hmm? Every person in the Bible, as soon as they got saved, they went and told somebody. Hmm? When I got saved, first person I went to tell was my dad who wasn't saved. Hmm? Couldn't wait till church was over. Go tell my dad I got saved. Hmm? When you get saved, you want to let everybody know you're saved. Huh? Romans 10 says if you're saved, you're not be ashamed. Hmm? You just want to tell folks you're saved. You may not know all the right terminology. You may not know what happened to you, but you let folks know you met the Lord, and they need him too. Hmm? When's the last time you told somebody you're saved? Hmm? Huh? Can I say something? When you first get saved, you get an experience of love and joy like you've never known. 
And you want everybody to know that. Hmm? Huh? And by the way, when you get saved, God not only gets your heart, He gets all of you. Hmm? Huh? Can I say? Truly. Holy Ghost filled saved people, they have no problem giving. When folks are stingy and don't want to ever give, that tells me they got a heart problem. Huh? I'm just asking, are you ready? Have you been saved? Boy, Jesus could come tonight. You ought to get ready. Huh? You ought to get ready. Let me ask you this. Are you rejoicing? If Jesus came tonight, would you be rejoicing? Would you be glad to see Him? Huh? Oh! Huh? John said, uh, we don't know what He's going to look like. But when He appears, uh, we'll know Him, for we'll be like Him, for we shall see Him as He is. Uh, and He says, everyone that hath this hope purifieth himself, even as He's pure. Uh, can I say, uh, uh, if you're looking for Him, uh, uh, you'll be rejoicing when He comes. Huh? Folks that don't rejoice are folks that are hoping that he don't come tonight. Because they got some things in their life that they know he wouldn't be pleased with. Are you rejoicing? Huh? There are a lot of folks when you talk about the Lord coming, they want to talk about streets of gold, mansions over hilltops, and they, they talk about all their problems being over. Well, all that will be true. But you ought to rejoice in that you get to see him. He's the one saved me. Streets of gold didn't save me. And really, I don't care about the mansion over the hilltop. Are you listening? I, I don't care about any of that stuff, and neither will you when you get to heaven. You know what they said in Revelation 5, 12? It's right up there. Worthy is the Lamb. That's all we're going to care about when we get to glory. Huh? Is Him. If Jesus comes tonight, would you be rejoicing? Would you be ready? If He comes tonight, would you be remorseful? Now listen. I'm sure you can see there's no halo on my head. And I don't see any halos on your heads. Every one of us have done, said, experienced things since we got saved that we're not happy about. Some things that we'd take back if we could. But can I say, if you're not careful, you'll live in that world. Do you know the Bible makes it clear that the mercies of God are renewed every day? Even Paul gave us the great example. He said, forgetting those things which are behind, I press toward the mark of the high calling of Christ. You can't change yesterday. It's gone. But you can live different today. And listen, uh, I, uh, I know you might have blown it yesterday, but the beauty of the blood of Christ uh, is it's forgiven. Let it be forgiven. Go beyond it. Uh, quit living in that remorseful state. Uh, get your eyes fixed on Him uh, and make a purpose in your heart. You're going to be different today than you was yesterday. You won't be remorseful when He comes. huh? Uh, you know, there's nothing good in the past. Really, think about it. Every man in here plays football in high school. That's all they hang to. We're like Al Bundy. Scored four touchdowns. What's Al Bundy doing now? He's selling shoes. Big deal. Huh? You know, that's how we are. We want to relive the glory days. And it amazes me how the glory days get bigger the, as the years go on. <laughs> Boy, I did this back when I was. Yeah, well, really, what's that doing for you today? Seriously. It causes you not to be able to get out of bed very good in the morning. Because you were stupid. Because you didn't take care of yourself. Now you're paying for it, huh? Trust me, I, I've lived that life, huh? Uh, I just look forward to both feet hitting the floor every day. I'm thinking, well, I made another day. Uh, can I tell you all something? I had a bad morning. Anybody have a bad morning? I had a bad morning. You see, in my mind, I'm still that strapping young man, go getter that I was 40 years ago. Boy, it's hard to say. Man, 40. Man, I was a teenager 40 years ago, Clint. Oh, gosh. Huh. Well, as every year, Miss Annette got me a suit for my birthday. Every year, she gets me a suit for my birthday. We went to Macy's last week to get me a suit for my birthday. And this little fellow that was working there said, do you need them today? No, didn't need them today. So if you can wait and pick them up next week, we're having a pre-sale today. You can get an extra 30% off today. They was having a good sale. And she had coupons. 
hallelujah for coupons, and then another 30%. So I bought two suits and a sport coat, four ties, a pair of slacks, you know, $1,900 worth of stuff for 500 bucks. It was a good day. So he picked them up yesterday. Well, I'm getting ready to go out of town. I mean, my life's been a whirlwind for a week. I mean, just everything, just trying to get everything done and get everything. And then, you know, I picked up my shirts from the dry cleaners, did all it, picked up my suits and everything. I said, I'm going to wear a new suit today. So I got them all ready last night, clipped off all the little price tags and all the little strings and all the little stuff, opened up the pockets and everything and everything, go to put them on today. They lie to you. <laughs> that suit was not measured in inches around the waist. It was centimeters. I put that suit on. It's the truth. It was this close from buttoning. It was so tight I couldn't lift my leg up to tie my shoe. I mean, it was terrible. I mean, it was terrible. I got, I, they lied to me. Uh, I told Miss Nettis I can't wear this. So I did wear the new sport coat I got, but I couldn't wear the suit. I got to take them pants back this afternoon. And then my shirts, I took them to dry cleaner. And they had a little tag on this one. So they, they did it a couple times, you know. These white collars, sometimes uh, uh, they got to run through a couple times, huh? So they said, so I'm trying to button. That's as close as I can get it. I already loosened it before I got here today. It wouldn't but They shrunk my shirt. I'm telling you, they shrunk it. I told Miss Annette, as soon as we get back from South Carolina, I'm going to see Miss Sheila at that weight loss center over there. I'm having a problem. Either the dry cleaner and the clothes people are wrong or I'm wrong. Something's got to get fixed, huh? What happens is we want to live back yesterday. You know, a 36-inch waist yesterday is not the same 36-inch waist today is what I'm trying to tell you. We are living in yesterday. Well, unfortunately... There's a lot of darkness that goes with yesterday, too. There's a lot of shame that goes with yesterday. There's a lot of heartache and heartbreak that goes with yesterday. There's a lot of things that, have done, that were done wrong to us yesterday that we didn't bring on ourselves, but it's yesterday. And if we're not careful, we'll live yesterday and we'll become bitter, we'll become cold, we'll become unfruitful. And my dear friends, that's not a way to meet Jesus. Amen. What we've got to learn is that the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all sin. But we also need to realize that if we'll put our eyes on Him and we'll focus on Him and we'll walk with Him, all of a sudden yesterday starts losing its hold on us. And we won't be remorseful when we meet Jesus. I'm not belittling your yesterday. I know pain is pain. I know heartache is heartache. I know wrong is wrong. And those things are subject to happen to all of us. But friend, if you dwell there, you're going to be a miserable person. You're not going to be effective for Jesus. And when Jesus comes, you're going to think, why did I hold on to all of that when I could have been holding to his hand? If he comes tonight, will you be ready? Will you be rejoicing? Will you be remorseful? If he comes tonight, will you be rewarded? I read in the Bible where he says, Enter in, thou good and faithful servant, and enjoy the Lord. He says, well done, thou good and faithful servant. You're going to get a well done, or are you going to be done for? Preach on that one time. You see, all the deeds done in our body after we got saved, they all mass into several categories. Either wood, hay, and stubble, gold, silver, and precious stone. You see, after he comes, it's too late. Everything that we're to do for Jesus, we got to do it now, friend. When he comes, will you be rewarded? Now listen, how we conduct our lives after we get saved will determine how we'll rule and reign with Him in the life to come. Amen. If you live a sorry Christian life now, you're not going to rule over cities and countries in the next life. You're going to be ruling over the dog catcher or something. Listen, will you be rewarded? The Bible says, lay up your tre treasures in heaven where the rust corrupt not and the moth and nothing. Yeah. Hey, listen, will you be rewarded? You've heard me say this many times. hundred years from now, the only thing that's going to matter is what you did for Jesus. Hmm? And I know you got a life. I know in your life you've got family. You've got to work. You've got responsibilities. And God understands all that. And the Bible even teaches man doesn't work, he shouldn't eat. God understands you've got to work. Yes, sir. But never lose sight of the fact we need to work for Jesus too. Yeah. Amen. Now I thought about this. If Jesus comes tonight, will you be reprobate? Hmm? 2 Corinthians 13.5 says, Examine yourselves whether you be in the faith. Prove your own selves. 
Know ye not your own selves how that Jesus Christ is in you, except you be reprobates. You need to examine yourself whether you're in the faith. What motivates you? Are you trying to win God's love? Or do you do what you do because of God's love? So many people are trying to gain acceptance and we're already accepted in the beloved. Maybe you're not in the beloved. Maybe you're reprobate. Maybe you're going through the motions. I never would ever want to cause you to doubt your salvation. But I'm here to tell you there's a lot of folks sitting in church pews all across this country that don't know Jesus. We got folks in this building today that once were lost church members. They thought they were okay. Uh, they dressed the part, they walked the part, they talked the part, but it was just an acting role. They did not know Jesus. The Bible says in Titus 1.16, They profess that they know God, but in works they deny Him, being abominable, disobedient, and unto every good work reprobate. It's one thing to say you're a Christian, it's another thing to live like a Christian. You can't live like a Christian unless you are a Christian. And then Jeremiah 6.30 says, Reprobate silver shall my uncall call them, because the Lord hath rejected them. That word reprobate means tested out worthless. And if you're here today and you're not saved, you are worthless to God. I've got news beyond that. You're the enemy of God. And God's going to destroy all of His enemies in the lake of fire forever and ever and ever. And it's just real simple. If Jesus came tonight, what would your response be? Are you ready to go? You can be. In a moment, I'm going to have an invitation. I'm going to have, invite you to come get oiled in your vessel. Come get saved by the good grace of God. Say, preacher, I don't know how to be saved. You come, we'll take the Bible and show you what the Bible says about being saved, just like Brother Josh did that Muslim, and you can be saved by the good grace of God. If you're here today and you're saved, are you ready to meet the Master? If not, you can be. And you should be. And shame on you if you're not ready to meet Him. Because who wouldn't want to see Jesus? Amen. Folks that aren't right with Him don't want to see Him. If you don't want to see Him, I'd get right with Him. Let's all stand. Brother Ray, get a song of invitation. Well, folks are coming. Let's pray. Father, tried our best to mind the Lord today. Lord, I feel in my soul there are folks in the sanctuary today if you was to come tonight they are not ready to meet you Lord I've done my part I pray the Holy Ghost of God would now take over Holy Ghost conviction would fall on the soul Lord whether the soul needs to be loved to Christ or to be stricken with fear to come to Christ I pray the Holy Ghost of God would do what is necessary Lord, I pray for the saints of God. Lord, we're so busy. I understand. I'm so busy. And too many times we're so busy we don't think about you and don't put you first. God, help us to be ready when you come. Now, Lord, speak to hearts. May revival break out in our lives. May Jesus be glorified. May we be found rejoicing when you come. We well, thank you for what you do in Jesus' name. Amen. If you enjoyed today's message, head on over to ibcflorence.com and click on sermons. And don't forget to check out our other links in the notes section of today's broadcast. As always, thanks for listening.